Welcome to Firearms of America. Today we will once again dive into the history. The history of one of the most popular handgun manufacturers out there. Glock. Glock history begins in the 1980 when Austrian Army forces made an announcement that they are looking to replace their World War II era Walther P38 handgun. Now, Walther P38 was a semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm. It was the first locked breech pistol to use a double single action trigger. It was a great gun that have seen a lot of combat. We're talking World War II, Vietnam War, War in Afghanistan, Algerian War. But it has been developed back in 1939 and after 40 years in service, it was time to upgrade. So in 1980, Federal Ministry of Defense came up with the list of 17 criteria that were required to be present in the new service handgun. Some of the criteria were self-loading capability, NATO standard 9mm parabellum, a secure against accidental discharge from a fall or a strike, etc. The contenders were subject to 15,000 rounds of standard ammunition and then some overpressured ammo, or should I say double pressured ammo. Uh, to give you some numbers, the normal operating pressure of the NATO standard 9mm round is about 2,500 bar. Well, the overpressured cartridge was generating the whole 5,000 bar. Yeah, so double pressure. Now, Gaston Glock, born July 19, 1929, was an Austrian engineer, the manufacturer of curtain rods. Yes, no relationship with guns. Alright, in 1970s he started making knives for Austrian army, but still no guns. Yes, he had not designed or manufactured a gun. In fact, up until he was 52 years old, and there goes your uh, never too late saying. So Mr. Glock heard the announcement from the Austrian army and decided to take on the challenge of producing Austria's next military sidearm. So in 1982 Glock starts assembling a team of experts in firearms from all sorts of branches. We are talking military, police, civilian sport shooters and so forth. It took the team only about three months to develop a working prototype. As an expert in polymer, Mr. Glock decided to implement more synthetic materials to production of the firearm to make it cost-effective option. And so the Glock 17 chambered in 9mm was ready. Now why Glock 17? Well because this was actually the 17th patent by the company. Anyway, in the same 1982, Glock 17 was submitted to Austrian army for consideration and passed all of the exhaustive tests with flying colors, becoming the winner. Practically immediately after the tests, Glock 17 was adopted by the Austrian military and Austrian police as the P80, Pistole 80 if I am uh, pronouncing that correctly. The initial order was 25,000 guns. It is worth mentioning here who were the other contenders in the test. Well, we had some serious guys. A heckler and coach, Six Hour, Beretta, a fan. Some of the serious names to mention. So imagine this, J just, just imagine. A random guy, curtain rod manufacturer, named Glock, develops a gun in three months and wins over the manufacturers who have been in gun business forever and in fact still are. Three months. Hard to believe. Almost seems like Mr. Glock was destined to be the firearms manufacturer. 
And you know what? I think he was, because after the results of the tests by the Austrian army, the whole world became interested in Glock pistols, especially the United States where they have been planning to replace the legendary M1911 since the late 1970s. Now don't get me wrong, M1911 is a legend. In fact, I have done the same history lesson video on 1911 called The Amazing History of 1911. So make sure to check that one out as well. But, but the thing is, 1911 has been in service since 1911. And so in 1983, only a year later since Glock's initial success, the US Department of Defense invited Mr. Glock to submit Glock 17 for their evaluation. Four Glock 17 pistols were submitted. However, because of the strenuous demand that Mr. Glock could not possibly meet with his manufacturing team, he had to decline. So yes, who knows, the US Army could have very well had the Glock 17 with them instead of the Beretta M9, which replaced the M1911 in 1985. After all, Glock beat Beretta in Austrian trials. But let's not speculate and get back to the path of Mr. Glock's success. Yes, in two year trials from 1983 to 1985, Glock 17 was chosen as the Norwegian and Swedish Armed Forces sidearm. In fact, Glock 17 surpassed all of the NATO durability standards during these trials and so Glock 17 became the standard NATO classified sidearm. Okay. Let me remind you once again, a pistol developed in three months by a team that was assembled by a guy who never had anything to do with guns before. Yeah. And so, by 1992, some 350,000 Glock handguns were sold all around the world. 250,000 of them in the United States alone. The Glock 17, often referred to as Generation 1 because it was the Generation 1, also known as P80, thanks to the Austrian Army. Now, the first G17s that were imported into the US had serial numbers from AF000, AH000, AK000, and AL000. Yeah, you got that right. They had this barrel that had a smaller overall diameter due to the thinner bore walls, also later referred to as pencil barrel. Now these pencil barrel glocks are the gemstones within the community of gun collectors. So hey, if you have that old generation 1 glock laying around, check out the serial number. Anyway. Generation 1 Glock 17 was later replaced by the Generation 2 version in 1988. To meet the American ATF standards, Glock had to embed the receiver with the steel plate that displayed the serial number of the firearm. That was one of the modifications that was done. Now, Generation 3 came in 1998. The frame now had the accessory rail, some finger grooves on the grip, also, you could now have your Glock in some other colors besides black. Yay! Of course, most of us are familiar with the Generation 4 Glocks that were introduced in 2010 that had some upgrades to the recoil spring assembly among a few other improvements. In 2017, Glock presented their Generation 5, starting with Generation 5 Glock 19 and the one and only Glock 17. Ha! Yes! Today you can find plenty of different Glock models of different sizes for your personal preference whether you're looking for a concealed carry pistol, a home defense gun or a competition shooting. These models come in a variety of calibers such as 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, 380 Auto, 10mm, 45 ACP, 357 SIG, 22LR. There is the whole world of modifications and customization of Glock stuff out there. Glock is probably one of the most modified, customized pistols, but it is still known as one of the most reliable, popular, easy to operate handguns. And the crazy part is, 
considering that there are only 5 generations that had a few adjustments and improvements in between all the way since 1982, if you look at the original generation 1 Glock 17 and the all new generation 5 Glock 17 of today, you will see that it is that same old Glock. And to think about it, all this popularity, all this success by a guy who never designed a gun before, who never built a gun before, who did not have a team or capacity to build a gun until he decided to do so and did in three months before submitting it for a strenuous trials by an Austrian army. This is truly an amazing history of Glock. Mr. Glock is 91 years old and is worth 1.1 billion dollars as of today, according to some sources. What an absolute inspiration and legend. Mr. Glock created a legacy that will live forever. So long live Mr. Glock. Thank you for making the world of firearms a better place. I am off to shoot my Glock 35. Thank you all for watching. This was the amazing history of Glock.